If you don't have money motivation, you will not reach your full potential in your lifetime. How would you feel if I took a thousand dollars from you, gone, never to be seen again? Pretty average, right? Now what if I told you you were robbing yourself of probably even more money than that every single year? And this is simply because most people get paid, let money slip through their fingers and they have no idea where it's gone. Now, I want to show you a handy little trick. I learned this from financially successful people, made my own adjustments, and damn, it works so well. I don't want to make you many promises, but I will promise you this. If you implement what I'm about to teach you, I guarantee you will be better off than you are now. Without any further ado, let me teach you the first step in regaining control of your money. And the secret is, drum roll, run yourself like a business. Control your money coming in, control your money going out. It sounds really simple because it is that simple. Could you imagine a business operating by not tracking their expenditure or budgeting? It doesn't take a financial genius to know that that just would never work. And it is the exact same with us. Now I'm sure you've all been told at some point in your life the importance of budgeting, but you don't really do it because it's boring or it's too much effort. What I'm gonna show you requires minimal effort and minimal time. How is budgeting so easy? Two things, multiple accounts, automated transactions. What do I mean by this exactly? From this one account, you set up automatic transactions to occur into other designated accounts. I'm gonna tell you exactly what these accounts should be. The best part about this is it's automated. You don't have to have any discipline. It takes away the emotion from budgeting yourself and it happens in the background of your life. I set up these accounts a little while ago and it's drastically changed my financial status. I am now able to invest and save large portions of my income. I forgot to mention, doing this enables you to have guilt-free spending. Sound pretty good? Two common things I hear are, firstly, people want to save money, but they don't track their finances, so they don't know where their money goes, and they aren't able to save anything. Or, on the contrary, they save so much that when they want to buy themselves something, they feel so bad about it and they beat themselves up. Well, doing this eliminates both of those things. Now, there are seven places your money needs to go when you get paid. The first one I like to call a checking account. This is the account you get paid into. This account is like the director of all your bank accounts. Its sole purpose is to filter your income into different accounts. That's it. Now this account is really important because it acts as a centralized hub where all the activity occurs out of. When you are setting up these accounts, make sure that you find an account that has no fees. Well, I use ComBank only because I use ComSec for my investing. I just like having everything with the same bank. The app is really easy to use. I just like the way it's laid out. However, they do have account fees on some of the accounts. I just have to be mindful when I was setting up the accounts that I was creating accounts that didn't have fees. If you didn't already realize the importance of having an emergency fund, I hope this pandemic has brought to your attention why you should have a little bit of extra money set aside for rainy days. If you can't afford to dedicate a large bit of your income to building an emergency fund to begin with, that's okay. You can start with really small increments. After some time, you will at least have enough money to cover a vet bill or your car insurance or any other unexpected expenses that occur. Now this account is really important because it enables you to cover these expenses without dipping into your savings account. The mistake so many people make is they might allow enough money for themselves to cover everyday expenses. However, they neglect the unforeseeable obligations. So when these occur, they have no choice but to dip into their savings. This comes back to the paying yourself first. I would suggest having this money in a high interest savings account. My partner and I personally use Vault. It offers a 1.45%, which I understand isn't fantastic. However, a lot of banks that do offer anything higher than this, you have to meet certain criteria. For example, make five transactions a month or grow the balance, something like that. Vault is restriction free. So it's perfect for an emergency fund. But the ideal goal here is to have at least 
two months of your income set aside. By building up this emergency fund, that's what we're trying to achieve. The third account is my absolute favorite. It's the money maker, arguably the most important account above all. This account is the pay yourself first account. So when your income comes into the checking account, it goes into the emergency fund. And then the second transaction goes into your investing account. Now, whether you're investing in the stock market or real estate, whatever your investment choice is, this money needs to be put aside for that investment. You are going to hear me say this a lot, but I feel as though I really need to reiterate because so many people know, yes, I should pay myself first, but not many people actually do it. And this is the game changer. If you set this up as an automatic transaction, it's out of the way, and then you deal with what's left. This investment account is like another central account where all of your investments come out of. I personally let the money build up a little bit over time. So then that way, when an opportunity arises, I have enough money to make the investment straight away. I'm going to go into a lot greater detail about investments and the stock market. I'm even gonna show you how to set up a brokerage account and actually buy a stock. But in this video, all I'll say about it is you must have a separate account for investment purposes. Fourth account, paying off debt. I don't know if that will apply to everyone. Anyone who has outstanding debt that charges interest, you must do this. For example, a car loan charges really high interest. I would suggest paying that off as soon as possible. The reason why I say only pay off debt that charges interest is because if you have Australian student loan, we aren't charged any money for being in that debt. So there really isn't any reason that we need to pay that off sooner. Debt without interest, freeze up your money so you could potentially use that to invest. However, in saying that, I am in no way advocating that you should go and use Afterpay or Zip. It's an account where money should come in for the sole purpose to pay off any debt. For me, I had a car loan, so I put aside money into this debt account and then I use that to pay off my car loan as soon as possible. There's a snowball or avalanche method. Personally, I like the snowball, so that's gonna be the only one I'm gonna talk about in this video. This is where you list all of your debts in order of smallest to largest. You start off by paying the smallest debts first. I like this method because you tackle the smallest debts first, which means that you can pay them off faster. Majority of the money game has to do with the mind. So by paying off smaller debts first, you're getting little wins faster. As opposed to trying to pay off larger debts, Sometimes this can seem unrealistic and it might take a long time and this can be discouraging to you and you might lose interest. So our money has come into a checking account. We've transferred money to emergency fund account, to an investment account, to paying off debt account, and now we're at expenses. This is where you pay all of your necessities out of. And when I say necessities, it's actually quite broad. I mean 21st century necessities. So I'm including things like your internet and your phone bill. So for me, I had money transferred into an expenses, a direct debit to pay all my bills out of this one expenses account. So when you're calculating how much money exactly should be allocated to this account, keep in mind the 50, 30, 20 rule. What this means is that 50% of your money should be for need, 30 should be for wants, and 20% for savings. Now, I don't exactly agree with these figures exactly. So if your expenses do exceed 50% of your income, I would seriously recommend reevaluating your expenses and seeing if you could either eliminate some or decrease some. My partner and I did this not long ago. We reassessed all of our expenses. For example, I changed phone providers and internet providers, and this allows me to save a decent amount of money per year. Making these changes has enabled me to save a decent amount of money every year. I also include petrol and groceries in this account. So when you're setting it up, you wanna make sure that it is linked to a debit card. Things that I wouldn't include in this account include things like clothes, shoes, or other materialistic items. The next account I'm gonna discuss is a short-term savings account. This account is for you to reach any short-term saving goals you have in mind. For example, if you're wanting to go on a holiday or you're saving up for your wedding, you allocate money into this account to help you reach some of those smaller financial goals. And that do not go crazy with this account. It really still is a spending account. Winning the money game is about being smarter with your money. So you should really question some of your short-term saving goals before allocating money to them. Let's recap the accounts that we've gone through so far. First, the checking account where your income comes in. Following that, the emergency fund account, then the investment, 
then we've paid off debt, we've paid our expenses, we've, we've allocated some money, short term saving goals, and now, last but not least, we are at guilt free spending. You've been financially responsible enough to allocate money to all the important places that it needs to go. Now, you can spend the remaining balance like you don't give a damn. This budgeting method works by paying yourself first and you spend the remaining balance as opposed to spending first and saving the remaining balance. Huge difference. You never have to feel bad about spending money again because you're still reaching all of your financial goals. Go crazy with this account, spend what you like, or if one week you don't want to spend it, you can save it up and you can bank it up and then you can make a large purchase down the track, like a laptop or buy yourself a nice pair of runners, whatever. It is. In other words, treat yourself and don't feel bad about it. We've gone through the seven accounts that your money should go. How do you actually work out how much money should be allocated to each one before setting up the automated transactions? This is how I personally did it. I knew that I really wanted to aim to invest 20% of my income at least. So I sat down, I did the calculations, worked out how much my expenses, any money I should allow myself, in mind that I still want to go out, have fun, live my life. I really didn't want to cut back on anything that I love. I began with taking 20% away, and then I knew that I was able to work with the rest. So I did the calculations, including my spending account, and I realized that I actually had a lot of money every week to spend. So I went back and I added more to my investing account. I want to reiterate that I did learn this technique of financial profession. It has made a world of difference in my life. Starters, it's vital that you know where your money is going. As I mentioned, run yourself like a business. The reason why I love this technique so much is it's automated. All I had to do was put in the effort at the beginning to do the calculations and set up the accounts and automated transactions. But once that's been done, I never thought about it again. I rarely check my bank account these days as I know my money is going all the places that it's meant to. My second favorite part about this technique is I can spend the remaining balance as I like on whatever I like and I never have to feel terrible about it. Right, let's recap what I've gone over in this video. I'm paid into our checking account. The money has firstly gone into an emergency fund as that's super important because we never want to dip into our savings for emergencies. Second, we paid ourselves first and this has gone into investment account. This investment account we're going to make investments as we please. Fourth, we're transferring money into account where we're paying off any debt. Debt that charges interest unless it's after pay or zip pay. Don't use those. So we've paid off all our expenses, our groceries, petrol. And last, we have guilt-free spends. We have money to spend however the hell we like. I can guarantee you that if you have not managed your finances before and you don't know where your money goes, and you start to implement some sort of financial plan, so you drastic effects. That's why I wanted to discuss this because I know people are put off by budgeting because it sounds like a lot of effort, but something as easy as this that can make such a drastic difference, there really isn't any reason why you shouldn't do this. Going back to that investment account, I'm going to discuss some places that you can invest your money. I want to break this down in a lot of detail as I know there are a lot of people at different levels. Even if you don't implement this amazing life-changing technique and there's one thing you should take away from this video, it is that you have to track your finances. It is the first step to building wealth and breaking the shackles of money. You won't get anywhere without monitoring your money. You really cannot just become good with money by making more money. The important thing is you learn how to handle the money you have now before you think of increasing your income. Again, this is the reason why high income earners can still be completely broke. Now on a little side note, I want to start making a recommendation every single video. The recommendation for this video is the movie The Big Short. This is about the global financial crisis that occurred in 2008. It's actually a super entertaining watch and it tries to explain things really simply. The reason I'm recommending this is because it's a great movie for economics. It shows you how all of the different markets and everything in the world is interlinked. Also, in the future, I will be doing a video explaining the global financial crisis, what exactly happened and how it happened. I think not only is it interesting, but it's actually important for everyone to understand why it happened and why it affected everyone globally. Now, if you want any clarification on anything that I've discussed in terms of the accounts, or you want me to explain something in more detail, please drop a comment below and I'll be sure to answer everything as best that I can. If you also have any recommendations on anything you would like to see more of from me or anything that you would like me to read or look into for you, you can also comment. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for some super interesting videos coming up about investing.